Okay, we are at 3.45, so we should get started. Welcome to the final session of our conference. It is my great pleasure to introduce Giulio Constantini from the University of Milan, Bicocca, who will be presenting on Honest for the Good Reason, the Impact of Goals and Motives on Honesty. Hi, so thank you for being here. Uh, so today, uh, my plan is to give you a uh, little background of why we are interested in goals and motives of honesty and uh, a quick recap of what we achieved on the first year of the project. I will try to keep that part uh, as short as possible. And then I will try to get, um, we did several studies in this project, I will try to uh, get to the more meaty part and to the more, uh, I would say, uh, complex uh, things that we achieved in this project. So uh, why are we interested in goals and motives of honesty? And the idea is from a philosophical standpoint, um, it has been um, reason that honesty cannot be really understood uh, by only making a reference to behaviors. One needs also to understand uh, the goals that one is trying to achieve with, with honesty and maybe also with, with uh, dishonesty. And uh, goals may be necessary ingredients to fully understand um, honesty, uh, characterize it. Uh, from a personality psychology point of view, honesty is embedded in the broader hexaco model uh, that includes several other traits, uh, emotionality, extroversion, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness, and honesty, humility. Honesty, humility is a, is a broad personality trait that includes uh, four facets, let's say uh, lower level traits, sincerity, fairness, greed, avoidance, and modesty. And there is, uh, as, as it was mentioned in this afternoon's talk, um, a very good questioner at the Exaco Personality Inventory to assess all of these facets and of these traits. Uh, one of the limits was mentioned today is that this questioner um, does not include a lot of truthfulness in it. it includes uh, mostly benevolence and unwillingness to exploit others than truthfulness. Um, and but uh, in terms of prediction, uh, the Exaco PI questionnaires were, uh, worked very, very well. Um, however, we didn't start from this uh, questionnaire and the, its, its items, also for another reason, that we uh, were interested in specifically in the goals, in the motivational part. And personality items in the Exaco PI, but also in other, in other instruments, uh, they tend to conflate several things. For, for example, cognitions, emotion, behaviors, and motivations. And if you have the motivation built in in the, in the, in the assessment of, of honesty, it's very difficult to, um, to investigate uh, the connection between uh, honesty and the motivations, because the motivations are somehow already implied in the operationalization of honesty. So we, uh, ev for most of everything we, we did in this project, we used adjectives. So we assessed, we developed adjectives to um, as the describe honesty, to assess honesty, and then the goals, we develop them from the bottom up using adjectives. So this is a one slide overview of everything we did in these couple of years. So just to give a, a, a sense of the uh, connectedness between uh, what we did and the uh, overall uh, aims of the project. Uh, in the first year, we identified um, honesty adjectives, so adjectives that were represented honest and dishonesty, and there's several aspects of it, including uh, sincerity, truthfulness, but also modesty, greed, avoidance, and fairness. Um, we use those adjectives to identify with a bottom-up procedure goal content, so goals for honesty and goals for dishonesty. Um, we namely ask people, uh, why do you or would you behave in a certain way, like in a honest way, in a dishonest way, in a deceitful way, in a et cetera, et cetera. And then we, uh, using uh, natural language processing and, 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 and independent traders, we came up with uh, classes of these goals and we developed questionnaire items uh, to assess each of these uh, goal classes. Uh, we also had a side project, I call it a side project because we didn't really think about it when we wrote the, the proposal at the beginning, but uh, we reasoned that it would be a pity to have this uh, list of adjectives that we use to uh, you know, create goal content and then don't uh, use them to assess uh, honesty and its facet in a psychometrically uh, good way. Um, we also investigated, the, uh, we did a cross-sectional study to investigate the broader motivational dynamics of, of, of honesty and dishonesty. 
Uh, I will just, I think I will just go very quickly or maybe skip this one, not because it's not interesting, but because I think the, the meteor part is in here. So um, we perform an ecological momentary assessment study to investigate the motivational dynamics of honesty as a trait, as a state, and as a behavior. And um, we, there we'll see something, uh, I think, uh, particularly, uh, let's say, um, yeah, the, some, sometimes surprising, sometimes interesting uh, for several reasons. I, I don't want to spoil that too, too much. <laughs> and, uh, an ecological intervention, momentary intervention study, which is uh, a study in which you try to, we try to manipulate uh, honesty, uh, leveraging goals. And ecological mental assessment means that we did not do a one-shot manipulation, but we did experimental manipulation every day for uh, 15 days. So that's essentially, when, that, that's the whole plan. Uh, we, uh, thinking about uh, yesterday uh, night's discussion, um, I want to say that we always implemented uh, principles of, of openness and transparency in research. So all the studies that you see uh, have been pre-registered. Uh, we never applied uh, optional stopping rules for sample size. And uh, we will share data and code uh, with the papers. So last year, I think um, um, I will just uh, mention that the most important results that we got, uh, got last year, we showed that um, these honest and dishonest goal measures, um, they can predict observed behavior. In this task, this task uh, was a task in which people were asked, uh, were given two images, and there could be differences between them. And we asked them, did you find the uh, three differences between uh, the, the, the pair of images? They, 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 they thought that there were always three differences. They had six seconds, and then they could answer whether they found them, and earn some more money than uh, uh, the, some more money, or they would, could say they didn't find. And but they didn't know that uh, in half of the images there were only one or two differences. So some of some of them guessed that uh, there were not always three differences, and some of them did not guess. And those who guessed uh, our let's say our trick, they lied less, but they still lied. And these are the, the other, and they, they, they like more. But uh, what's interesting is that in both cases, uh, taken individually and combined, um, dishonest goals predict more lying, even, if, even for those who understood the deception. And uh, dishonest goals uh, predict more lying above and beyond uh, personality traits. Uh, so above and beyond what people, uh, very few people think of themselves as honest people. And they predict even if these goals are peer reported. So if you ask someone to tell what are the goals of your friend, and they say my friend has dishonest goals, then it's more likely that the friend would lie more. So um, this is the, the side project. So we established that our goal questionnaire works. Uh, we developed this uh, 22 item uh, adjective based measure of, of honesty. Uh, and its facets, we actually oversampled uh, truthfulness a bit compared to the other facets. So to have more truthful content uh, in our scale. And uh, we, we have this, uh, let's say, a psychometric structure of the scale that replicates very well across several studies. And it shows measurement invariance between peer report and self-reports, meaning uh, that uh, the, the, the psychometric structure and the psychometric properties of the scale are similar if I uh, rate myself or if I rate someone else. Uh, I will just, OK, the, the, the scale converges pretty well with uh, um, Excel KPI honesty humility, with maybe the exception of, of grid avoidance scale, which is, uh, takes a different angle on, uh, uh, on grid. Uh, it converges also with the dark uh, personality traits, uh, with an interesting relationship. For example, sincerity is mostly connected with Machiavellianism and uh, uh, modesty with narcissism, etc. Uh, and the scales converge uh, some mostly in a expected way with, with other constructs such as authenticity, which is mostly fairness, uh, acceptability of lies, which is mostly fairness, etc. For example, uh, modest behavior is mostly modesty with some exception, etc. Et so now we have the ingredients <laughs> to study um, the dynamics of honesty uh, 
uh, the motivational dynamics of honesty. So we have an assessment of, of honesty based on adjectives and we have an assessment of goals. And uh, for honesty and dishonesty, what did we do with it? Well, cross-sectional investigation of motivational dynamics, uh, which I think I will skip. Maybe we, if we have time, we will go back to it. Um, but also mom study of momentary dynamics of honesty, goals, uh, and, and lies. Um, so, I, I think for the empirical researchers, um, it is obvious why uh, a study of uh, using intensive longitudinal uh, measures is, is, is more informative. Uh, but I thought it could be useful to, 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 to make it a, a bit explicit. So these are two, uh, let's say, time series of individuals, a red individual and a blue individual, that uh, uh, rated themselves on some variable. Let's say this is honesty. Um, and um, we can observe how honest uh, each of them is behaving um, in every moment. And the interesting part is that uh, with uh, longitude, intensive longitudinal data, we can decompose all the phenomena that we observe in two parts. One is the between subject. In this case, uh, it's simply the mean of the honesty over time. And we can conclude, for example, that the blue participant is more honest than the red participant. We can also focus our attention on things happening at the within subject level, meaning that, for example, we, we can say that on this particular moment, the, uh, the blue participant was more honest than its usual level, and in this moment was much less honest than its usual level. So these are the within subject dynamics that we'll, we, will, we will use. So we involved uh, 189 participants and more than 9,000 uh, observations. And we asked them, well, they reported at the beginning of the study and at the end of the study on their goals and their exact traits. But the meeting part is here. They, um, for five times per day, for 15 days, uh, they, we asked them to self-rate how important each of the goals that we found in previous studies have been for them in the past hour. We asked them to rate their behavior using the adjectives in the past hour. So how honest, how sincere, how modest, etc. Have you been? Also how dishonest, how uh, uh, immodest, etc. And then we also asked them to report how many times they lied in the past hour. Uh, it, it was, they, they could say one, two, three, four, five, uh, I think five or more. At some point, uh, we assumed that they couldn't possibly lie 15 times. And we wouldn't care that much. Uh, <laughs> regarding the structure, <laughs> regarding the structure of uh, um, our goal measure, what we found, I think, is, is quite interesting. Is that uh, okay? We we compare three models. Um, one in which we have a goal factor, like honest goal factor, and in which um, Honest goals are on the positive end of the factor and the negative goals are on the other end. So there are two poles of a single continuum. Uh, another model will be two completely separate motivational tendencies that are totally independent of each other. But the model that fit the data better at the within subject level is a model in which you have two factors that are correlated with each other. So they are, um, they are not completely independent. What was surprising for us is that this correlation that we is negative in cross-sectional studies is slightly positive here. Meaning that uh, uh, sometimes people have just more goals than in other occasions. And the same we found at the between subject level. So also at the between subject level, uh, if, you, if, you, if you look at what happens to people over time and, and, and smooth out differences, uh, momentary differences, you get that sometimes I mean, some people have just more goal than other people, including both honest and dishonest. Um, but still, uh, we use that, those goals to predict uh, honesty. So we, we checked whether when people say, I, ha um, I have more honest goal, uh, let's say, no, this is the between person component. So uh, we checked whether people who, s who say that on average, they are, have more honest goals or more dishonest goals than other people, uh, whether this predicts their, how they describe their behaviors in terms of honesty. And well, it does in expected direction. So uh, people that have honest goals tend to describe their behavior as more honest in general, and, and they are way around for this honest goal. And the same at the within person level. So, so far, so good. Even controlling for other personality traits, 
uh, even uh, estimated at uh, at time one, so before doing the intensive study, and even controlling for the goals at time one, etc., and uh, um, removing trends for uh, over time. Uh, and if we take a look at all the individual goals, they are all uh, related um, with honesty, at least either at the between subject or at the within subject level. Most of them are of both levels. But for example, avoid being deceived is a goal that is only related significantly at the within subject level. So on the, on the, on the left, you can see the between subject relationships between the person means, and on the right, let's say the within subject relationships. And we also examine whether having goals that are more honest or more dishonest now predict how you will describe your behavior three hours later. Mm -hmm. And well, this uh, is a weak relationship with, with honest goals and not significant relationship with dishonest goals. We, in a similar study on conscientiousness, we found stronger relationships over time. So this suggests that conscientiousness take, takes time to unfold. So if you have a conscientious goal, you will mm, be more likely to be conscientious three hours later. Uh, with honesty, the, the effects are smaller. So meaning that honesty is something that tends to happen in the moment. But uh, it's interesting to, 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 to see what happens with lies. So this is the distribution that we observed um, uh, with lies. So you have that as in previous studies, most people don't lie or lie very um, uh, infrequently. Uh, few people lie uh, a lot. So we, we uh, use the Poisson model to, to predict these lies using goals. And uh, we will focus on the effect of individual honest and dishonest goals. Um, I would like you to try and guess what, what happens here. Uh, so and remember, um, let's say um, we, we, if you want to take a look, these were the goals. Um, would you, what would you guess dishonest goals do? If you have more dishonest goals, do they predict um, more lies, fewer lies, a mix of the two? So mixed results. Who says more lies? Who says fewer lies? Who says a mix? And with honest goals, who says that honest goals predict more lies, fewer lies, mixed results. So, yeah, it, it's difficult to guess. Um, I mean, I, 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 what I would have guessed, of course, is more honest goals, uh, fewer lies, uh, more dishonest goals, more lies. It's, it's only true for more dishonest goals. So if you have dishonest goals, you get that people lie uh, more at the between subject and at the within subject level. So dishonest goals are clearly related to lying more. Mm -hmm. But with honest goals, the picture is, is, is much less uh, clear. Because people who have goals such as uh, avoid hurting someone or not putting on airs with others, they tend to lie more. Mm -hmm. uh, this last one only at the between subject level. And I, I can imagine why. So. Um, for example, I was discussing with Alan and, 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 and Tobias yesterday our abilities to play tennis. And everyone said, oh, yeah, I'm really not a good tennis player. But maybe tomorrow we play tennis and, and I discover that they are like a, a small Djokovic and they, they beat me. <laughs> <laughs> and they were only being modest. But at least they did, if they did that, it's not because they are dishonest people. Uh, but because they have the goal maybe of not uh, like looking you know, uh, really arrogant or something which is something that correlates with, with being sincere, actually. Um, and also, maybe tomorrow they, they beat me up at tennis, and then, but after the match, they say, no, but Julio, you are a good tennis player, don't worry. <laughs> maybe just because they don't want to hurt me. So they, uh, uh, this motivates them to lie. But another type of, of, of goals, honest goals, that uh, uh, I want to remind you, they, they, they do predict um, honest behavior. So that, in general, people rate their behavior as more honest when they have these, uh, these type of goals. Uh, but they lie more. Uh, are goals like avoid being deceived or getting justice or understanding whether I can trust someone. So these are goals that are related to protecting one's right for truth, for justice. And so people uh, sometimes lie more uh, for this type of reason. So I think it's very interesting. So what we get so far is we have these ingredients and we established a link with, uh, between the goals and, and honesty at different levels. And well, 
Um, when it comes to how do you perceive your behavior, then everything is, I would say, as expectant, clear and uh, clear cut. But when uh, we study lies specifically, then it gets, uh, uh, I would say, it gets more interesting. And, and also, these are goals, these are not justifications for lying. So it's just they are assessed somehow independently. So I ask people uh, which uh, goals were important for you in the last hour and how many times did you lie independently. So, uh, yeah. Now, uh, uh, our last study, uh, how, long, uh, how much time do you have? Uh, 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes, fine. So we wanted to see whether we could use honesty, um, uh, honest goals, actually, uh, and only honest, not dishonest goals in this case, um, to increase people's honesty. So what did we do? This is a, a randomized controlled ecological momentary intervention study in which um, we did some procedures to, um, let's say, induce a reflection uh, on, on goals, honest goals, a reflection on obstacles, uh, for these goals and promoting identification of strategies uh, for overcoming obstacles and, go and getting goals pursued. And we had two control groups, um, one active control group that did all the procedures, um, but on goals for openness. Uh, why openness? Actually, uh, we thought to use conscientiousness in, a, in an original project, but uh, openness turns out to be the trait that is least related to our, uh, honesty. So we wanted something that didn't overlap uh, any, in, in any way with, with, with honesty, and a passive control group that did nothing at all. We ended up uh, collecting 322 participants, 311 informants. Uh, so uh, we actually planned for 300 participants and 600 informants, two by participant. But, uh, well, it's, it's not easy to stop a data collection, uh, uh, longitudinal data collection, uh, considering for dropout. So at some point, some more participants uh, got in and we kept them. And, well, we hope that they will involve more, like two uh, informants each, but it did, didn't, didn't work out uh, uh, that well. So what did we do? We assessed, again, the traits and the, the, and, and, and the, and the goals at time one. Uh, we uh, randomly assigned each participant to each of the experimental condition. Um, we delivered the uh, smartphone-based intervention that I will show you in a moment for 15 days. And then after treatment, we assessed again the, the traits and the goals, and we assessed them. Uh, or that should be time three, of course. Uh, we assessed them uh, one month after the beginning of the study. Uh, we had some dropout, uh, not huge dropout, uh, uh, but some dropout uh, occurred. Uh, but actually, I have to say, these, uh, these numbers are the participants who completed at least uh, half of the um, in uh, daily interventions, who completed at least time one and one between time two and time three. So uh, these are only the participants that qualified, let's say, for the study, uh, as we pre-registered, of course, uh, the exclusion criteria. So what did they do? They had to choose every, day, uh, every morning between 6 a.m. And, 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 and noon. They needed to choose one goal. Uh, these were the goals for honesty, and these were the goals for the active control group openness to experience. Uh, for example, help someone or tell the truth without omission. And uh, we checked, and participants um, actually were decently distributed across goals. So all the goals were picked. Um, a decent number of times. Um, they needed to select a behavior. So uh, we, we asked them to select a behavior that they could do in the day to pursue their goal. So something that wouldn't be uh, too complex, but something that they could do that day. Think of a situation in which they could uh, implement a behavior and formulate a plan in the form of when I'm in a situation um, uh, or place or time, blah, blah, I will do a certain behavior, the behavior that I thought, to pursue the goal that I chose. Then we ask them to, ref to think of the main obstacles that may prevent them from implementing their plan and of a solution. So uh, um, formulating a solution that will enable you to enact uh, your behavior and achieve uh, your goal. And then we have them formulate this full plan. So to pursue the goal G that was pre-filled in, uh, if or when I, um, the following situation occurs, this actually was filled in in a previous stage, but uh, 
so they found their uh, previous response here. I will do this. If the following obstacle should occur, I will um, this obstacle, then I will take the following action that will allow me to keep my goal. And they could review and change everything in this plan. So uh, if they were unhappy with uh, how it worked, they could go back and change everything. And then every next day, we ask them, OK, yesterday uh, or the last time you completed the questionnaire, because we, we assumed that uh, there would be some missing question in between. Uh, you formulated a plan to achieve a goal. Do you remember which goal was? And then we, they were given a list. Uh, then we asked them, uh, how well do you keep the thing you keep, uh, kept your plan uh, yesterday? And they could say between one and seven, not at all or completely. And uh, regardless of your plan, do you think that you achieved your goal? And this is the, the results on, on, on how much they follow through their plan. Uh, the red line is the, the experimental group. The blue line is the active control group. And the experimental group actually remember they, they goes slightly better, uh, kept their plan slightly more, and, uh, and, and they say that they achieved their goal uh, slightly more than the active control group. But both of them, I would say, uh, they were decently faithful uh, to their plans. So if the midpoint here is four, they, well, most of the distribution is on the, uh, on the right hand. OK. So. Uh, time to guess again. <laughs> Who uh, of you thinks that, uh, 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 not of course the people that I have already informed of the results, uh, <laughs> would you, what would you guess? Uh, how, what, how did uh, honesty uh, rated by, let's say, adjectives change it in the experimental group compared to the other groups? Did it increase, decrease, or didn't change? Who says increase? Who says decrease? Who says didn't change? Yeah, you, you uh, good, good bet to be <laughs> skeptical. It didn't change at all. <laughs> to our uh, uh, bitter surprise, but well, that's that's empirical research. Uh, we didn't manage to change uh, to change honesty, uh, as I reported in, uh, at um, uh, at the end of the study here, or um, at time three, so after one month. So it didn't really change for the experimental group. Uh, it didn't change also for the other groups. Um, not in self-reports, not in peer reports. So, well, what we suspect, well, let's say, what we suspect may have happened, we had some, we need to investigate a little bit more, the dropout. So the dropout was somehow related to the variables that we observed, so that uh, honest, uh, honest people, conscientious people, and those who had more goals, honest goals, tend to stay in the study slightly more. So this was, didn't change between the groups, but then uh, uh, it could be important to, to look at. Also, we had more dropout in the two um, experimental and active, in the two active groups. And that's uh, uh, probably because they had to do a daily activity, so they may, it may be uh, too much for some of them. So this may be uh, one, way to search for uh, what happened. Uh, of course, um, there are other explanations. One obvious explanation is you cannot, I mean, uh, you cannot really manipulate uh, goals and, and honesty with, with a, such a simplified procedure, let's say. Uh, another thing is that we observed uh, in all groups, uh, so irrespective of the group assignment, uh, a slight increase in agreeableness. Uh, a slight decrease in emotionality. So something else changed for all participants, uh, but no group interaction, and we didn't observe that in peer reports. But one possibility is that some of these goals could be pursued not only with honesty, but also with, um, let's say, other behaviors that are, for example, agreeable or kind, or let's say, uh, emotionally stable. Uh, these are two examples. One is a good example of, of how uh, a, one of those plans was really about honesty. So uh, the goal was being transparent. During psychotherapy, I won't hide what I think. And if I'm ashamed, I remind myself that I pay the therapist for uh, solving this and that problem. So this is about honesty. But avoid hurting someone. If I'm angry, I won't be offensive. But if I do it, I, I say I'm sorry. This is actually the opposite of honesty <laughs> in a way. So uh, I mean, I won't be offensive, of course, is not. Uh, but I don't know. In this, I say I'm sorry. 
if I if I cannot control myself and offend someone, well, it's yeah, it's at least it's not about honesty. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in conclusion, I think that uh, well, we we should focus on what we have established uh, and not only on, on what didn't work out. Um, Big question number one and big question number two. I think we, we, we our studies contributed um, to uh, somehow answering those questions by uh, identifying empirically from the bottom up the goals that are important for honesty and dishonesty by establishing a link between these goals and, 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 and honesty as a trait, as a state, and as a behavior, lying. And um, also, the lying behavior has been observed in the laboratory and observed uh, in uh, everyday life. Uh, of course, we did not, uh, so the possibility of leveraging goals to produce a stable change in honesty is, uh, remains an open question. I think as, as all the um, empirical researchers know, it's, it's very difficult to change people. So <laughs> um, I, I didn't mention it, but we didn't even, we didn't get um, an effect on goals either. So our procedure did not really change the, the perceived importance of goals, uh, differential in groups. Mm. There were some effects, but were, let's say, weird. Uh, so if we want, we can, we can inspect them, but we're not as expected. So um, this is, uh, um, could have been expected, like <laughs> some of you guessed it, uh, because, um, you know, people go to psychotherapy for 10 years to change a tiny little bit and they have to protect this tiny little change uh, from, you know, getting back to their equilibrium. So it's very difficult to change people. But still, um, we think that uh, uh, at least on observed level, goals and honesty are very well connected. I want to thank uh, my team that includes Professor Perugini, the co-PI of the project, Anastasia Galkina, Simona Menta and Andrea Di Masi, who are uh, a PhD student a postdoc and research assistant uh, who work did really a lot. And thank you for your attention and uh, the Wake Forest University and the John Templeton Foundation for supporting this project. Thank you very much. how your goals sort of map onto these. Um, and so, so the first, they say, the first goal why people are less than truthful is to avoid confrontation of conflict or conflict. Uh, second, to ensure quality in the delivery of a product or service, uh, to buy time for an organization strategy to play out, and for self-protection or self-enhancement. And, and so that's what I was thinking of as I was thinking of your goals. Those are at least in a work context. And I guess in your study, they, I'm not sure if these people are working or not, but those seem, and I don't know if they're comprehensive, but at least they're arguing that those sort of cover the landscape of what people, why people are being less than truthful at work. Those are the motivations. And so um, I don't know if you think motivations and goals are the same or not, but that's what I wanted to raise, those sort of ideas and how they might fit in. Mm. So, so I think that, Mm. These people actually, um, the, the generative part, so the people who gave us open-ended answers from which we created goal classes, uh, were collected on prolific academic. So the idea that uh, they are like a broad population of, of Italian people. They are not students, but they're not all workers in a firm. So and I think they may have had in mind uh, more honesty in terms of um, in interpersonal relationship, uh, not specifically in, in, in business behavior, it may be in organizational behavior, may be slightly uh, different the set of goals and motives. Uh, some of the things that you said. Yeah, the avoiding confrontation seems like that's pretty interpersonal. Um, yeah. The other ones are, are definitely more organizational, and I didn't know if there was an analog of but there are things. Um, well, ensuring quality or buying time, things like that, um, I thought were interesting. We can imagine how they could relate to dishonesty, and I didn't know if there's, if there's I, a, you know, a parallel here. I think that they could, I mean, uh, somehow map, but loosely, to get a what I want no matter what, mm -hmm. and then make others do what suits me, which may be more 
at least re relevant in an organizational setting. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I am not uh, really sure. And then I think that, uh, so we did uh, some analysis here at the cross-sectional level. Let's say, let's do this. Let's pick, let me see. So let's, let's say, okay, these are broad value tendencies, the Schwarz values, uh, these four green nodes, these are uh, our goals, these are aggregates, so uh, the average of all honest goals and of all these honest goals, and these are the, the honesty facets, and if you check the, 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 the honesty and dishonesty, they are um, especially connected differentially to self-transcendence, so the, the, the broader value of self-transcendence uh, characterizes Honest goals positively and dishonest goals negatively. They are both connected to uh, openness to, uh, to um, no, they're only, I'm sorry, only, only honest goals are connected to openness to change and conservation, and then dishonest goals to self enhancement. So this is, let's say, on the broad motivational level. And also, we also inspected the moral foundation, which is, is not motives, but uh, uh, has something to do with it, is, uh, at least it's some motivational tendencies on a broader level. And what we observed is that the goals that we have are uh, mostly distinguished by uh, what uh, Graham calls individual focus or liberal morality. So uh, this may be a key difference because they are uh, about fairness, uh, care, and, and harm and reciprocity, positively for the honest, negatively for the dishonest, but they are not clearly distinguished in terms of of, of group level um, moral foundation, which is uh, purity, fairness, and reciprocity, and intergroup loyalty, which may be, uh, except for purity, may be uh, more relevant in an organizational context. Thank you for your question. I, I was uh, sad that there was no effect of the intervention. <laughs> um, and uh, so I was thinking about, you know, you, I was thinking exactly along the lines you were which was that uh, you, yeah, you try to change honesty and humility as a trait in a, one goal a day for a few weeks. And that was trying to change too much. And I think when you're developing something new, it's good to always first see if you can find any signal at all and then try to boost that signal. Right. And so I wonder if, if instead of starting with, I did they change honesty and humility at the end, but just see did they, did they, were they more honest during those several weeks? Like mm -hmm. you know, in the in the experimental condition and then in the controls, for example. And then I think you would, if you could find a signal there, then you could like I'm on. I, there's something happening. Let's see now if we can boost it up and build it to a bigger effect. That's a very good, uh, very good question. We thought about that a lot. Uh, there is a reason why we decided not, and that will surprise some, not to assess honesty during those two weeks. So we don't have that data, and the reason is that uh, we we didn't want them to. Um, let's say, reflect on their honesty as a behavior during that time. Uh, I, we suspected that, uh, uh, so we, we wanted, let's say, a pure effect of goals. Uh, and then it would have been, if we thought it would have been tougher to disentangle that from a, a specific effect of self-reporting honesty all the time. Um, so that's why we didn't assess that. But maybe uh, th that's, a, that's a good point. So one, uh, a better strategy would be, well, we, we tried to shoot for the stars. We took a big risk, uh, <laughs> let's say. Uh, but we thought that it would be, uh, uh, well, it's a funded project. It's an ambitious project. We thought we could have a risky study in it. Uh, but maybe uh, it would be good uh, if we, uh, next year, we try to do that uh, in a more, let's say, um, uh, less arrogant fashion. So we try to, <laughs> <laughs> to change something more specific. So I have a comment on what Will said. Because, so we've done a couple of additional studies you know, focused on character virtues. I really want on intuition, humility, and compassion. And we, there we assess people's like, state virtues across the study. And we found a shift at the state level, but not the trait level. And I'm wondering what might be happening is that, especially with character virtues, it might take more time for you to update your self-concept Mm. on a particular virtue, right? So it might be that two weeks is not enough for you to yes. update the self-concept. And especially if they're not reflecting on the implication of behavior, right? So if you're not asking them how honest are you today or like being an honest person today, you're not affording them the extra opportunity to reflect on whether they're achieving those goals has implications for how they think about themselves. Mm. 
Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, we didn't think of it, but uh, it's true. So it, it's at all possible that they, that they just, maybe they, they, they pursued some behaviors, they focus on the behaviors, uh, maybe on the goals, but uh, like daily goals, but not, uh, this not, they did not make in their self-concept and it's, it's totally reasonable. So, thank you. In fact, isn't the, most of the instructions usually say, I don't know exactly in your, in your case, but they usually say, you know, in general, over the last six months or in general or something like that, yet you're, you only had two weeks of the, or some number of weeks of the implementation. So you ask them, you instruct them to report on their honesty and humility for the months, the four months before, you know, the several months before the study even started. So, like, like around the same, the, the, you're, you, what their the dependent variable is sort of what they think of themselves in general, and that's not likely to have changed. So, that's a good point. We had a discussion on that as well. I think uh, uh, Marco Perugini and I discussed on that a lot. Uh, because uh, at some point we thought, well, we should ask them, how honest have you been in the last couple of weeks? Uh, but you say, ah, but this is not a trait. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so at the end, we decided to, to, to uh, ask, how are you in general? So, and then uh, we actually had that uh, in there also, I didn't show you the results about that, also the lying in everyday situation scale, but that uh, scale I put in terms of um, how, I don't know, how many times you lied in the last couple of weeks. But uh, we didn't observe results either. So, but that was specific about lying, and lying and goals have a very complicated relationship, let's say. Uh, just to follow up on that, I thought it was really interesting in the work on fixed versus uh, growth moral character beliefs would actually seem as kind of what Iran is saying, that people tend to view their character, but they are pretty fixed, right? And so even if their behaviors are changing, they reason to believe that their self-concept would not. Um, and so it's interesting to think about right, what, what is the trait? If, is it how they're representing themselves in the self-concept versus the, um, the actual behaviors and things, thoughts, feelings that they're having? Um, that was just a great follow-up to that thought. That was a good point. And it's with one implication of people changing their self-concept. Maybe they take, acknowledge the fact that maybe they weren't as honest as that, like the idea would like to feel, right? So I think that one, might be one reason why people might be motivated to maintain the same trait, right, for a trait like honesty. Mm -hmm. Because part of what, by saying that my honesty has changed for the better, you sort of acknowledge to yourself that I maybe mean, wasn't as honest as ah, that's, I haven't thought about that. That's, 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 that's a good point. So there may, yeah, that might be this type of resistance. Yeah, that's true. Because yeah, we, the, 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 the changes that we observe over time, right, were um, about agreeableness and, and emotionality, which may be less, uh, let's say, um, valence charge traits. Uh, agreeableness is, but maybe not as much as honesty. I think it's about human has a paper, right? So just that people have fewer personality change goals for value-oriented personality traits. So I think honesty, humility, and openness, people t tend to not want to change their personality. Mm. What we observed on the change goals in, in uh, other studies is that uh, in, in for all other traits, the, the, the fewer um, levels of the traits you have, the more change goals you, you have. So for example, if you are emotionally stable, you want to be more emotionally stable. So if you are introvert, you want to be uh, more in extrovert. Uh, but then for honesty, it's the opposite. Only if you are honest, you want to be more honest. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's, uh, Maybe a complicated trait to change. Yes. Yeah, I wonder if I'm, I'm still thinking about the fact that, yeah, it seems like people who have lots of good, honest motivations uh, also lie pretty often. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I wonder if that wouldn't also sort of the same mechanism explain why like in becoming more attuned to honest motivations, they would actually end up lying a lot more um, in calibrating things or, or like their self-conception would, would get all sorts of out of whack because now they're thinking, oh, I, I'm thinking about you know, telling someone the truth instead um, and, and thinking about the conflicts now in, in ways that they haven't approached um, them as much and they aren't really sure how to mediate those conflicts or um, so like there, there's additional stability at the sort of more global level based on the mixed 
the motivational level. It's possible. So you mean that we, we put them in a, in a difficult position and uh, we gave them a difficult task to resolve uh, even at a behavioral level. So uh, the, the, the trait level would be uh, another, uh, adding another layer of complexity. Uh, that's true. That's possible. Thank you. Thank you very much.